primary function of the brain is to not engage in shit that's gonna kill you. You know what I'm saying? That is the primary function of this thing. So you gotta override that. That's a manual override. So for people in the stock market, for people in finance, mm -hmm. right? How do they cut, how do they mainly cut the financial wire of fear or place with the financial wire of building wealth? So you gotta move past. So now you gotta go in. I, I had this thing where I said you gotta uh, renegotiate the contract. Every time you go from brain to activity, you create a wire. Now watch this. At some point in this wiring, you create what's called a habit. Okay. Right? Once you create a habit, the habit is created is because the brain now connects the activity with some type of reward or pleasure. Right? That's how it becomes a habit. Because immediately the brain has now associated this activity with a reward or a habit. Yes. Now, on the reverse side of it, you got the brain, you got the activity. Anytime the brain associates this activity with any type of pain, it's now stored. And the more times you think about this in your brain and you get the feeling of that, it's stored. This wire now becomes a habit, but more so a fear-based habit. Mm. So now the brain associates the activity with either pleasure or pain, pain, and is stored in the subconscious mind. So now your subconscious mind is going to say, "Oh, money, okay. reward or pain." It depends on the activity. Working to get money. For most people, pain. Yep. Trading to get money, for me, pleasure. Yep. Losing money is not a pain, it's a byproduct to get me where I gotta go at. So I never associate the loss of money here. And if I never associate the loss of money here, I'll never have to worry about it being stored in my subconscious mind as pain. It's always gonna be in this part as I need that to get to the reward. That's so interesting because the wrong reward creates the wrong habit. The wrong reward creates the wrong habit and the wrong habit now creates an emotion and the emotion now creates an activity. Now you don't do it. Now you don't do it. Because you like, because I was going to say most traders in the event, in the place you know right now, they would have been cut them, they would have been the profit, they wouldn't be up as much as you because it's like, mm, they probably wouldn't have been in the trade. Because there's always a fear. And this is where fear tolerance comes in at. That's why your tolerance makes more sense as you climb the ladder. Think about it like this. Some people could drink one cup of alcohol, yeah. they like, boy, I'm messed up. Another person could drink a whole bottle and be like, where the rest of it at? Yeah. They've built up a tolerance. Your mind, your mind gives you one set of signals but after a certain amount of time, your body develops antibodies towards something. Or the werewolf ought to go through it. Yeah. This is why some people can sit down and take tattoos. Like I did my tattoos for eight hours. Some people would have tapped out at three. Yeah. Some people would have tapped out at, but when I got to eight and a half hours, I tapped out on the, on the next one. Yeah. I, I built up the, the risk tolerance, the pain, the fortitude to go that long. Right? So it's the same thing with anything, trading, with investing. With anything, think about this, jumping out of an airplane. I did that three times so far, yeah. right? I'm ready to go, ah, let's get up there, let's do it. When we climbing up, watch this, as we get in the air, once we get to about 15,000 feet, that's what we jumped out at, I'm the first one to come out, but now my brain like, yo, you really wanna do this? Yep. And so now you gotta click the switch that say, hell yeah, we doing this. So every time you say, hell yeah, we doing something, you create a why. Every time you say something, every time you associate a thought with an emotion and an activity, you create a wire. What that wire is programmed to depends on how you now see it, right? Think about it. I associated the habit of jumping out of the plane with a good exhilarating feeling. The primary function of the brain is to not engage in shit that's gonna kill you. 
You know what I'm saying? That is the primary function of this thing. So you got to override that. That's a manual override. So the wire is already drawn. But no, you, you draw the wire. Yeah, but when you're at the when you're on the plane, you're yep. at the edge of it. You already like, yeah, we about to do this. So now the brain is coming in saying, red alert, red alert, red alert, red alert, Correct. red alert. Oh, we about to do this. Yeah. You got to manually override that and say, hell yeah, we doing it. And when you jump, the brain said, oh, okay, this ain't that bad. But if you don't jump, then... If you don't jump, you're associated with this. And this is how fear is built. Fear is built when you, when you face the fear, you got about 30 seconds to make a decision. Yep. When you face the fear, when you face a situation that you can panic in, you got a 30 seconds or something like that to say, nope, we moving past it. Yep. Because, watch this, if you dwell on it too long, you help build the strength of that wire. So now it's gonna be hard to make you go. Now it gets harder and harder to make the decision. It gets harder and harder to make the decision. The longer you sit on it, the more, the longer you contemplate on it, your brain gonna create enough thoughts and enough predicaments to why you shouldn't do a thing. You feel me? Because the primary function of the brain is to do what? Save you. We supposed to be here. So anytime you push in the brain, Outside of that comfort zone, you are manually taking control of what's going on. So that's why when you look at certain movies or you look at certain things, people be like, he just got that dog in him. Because even if that person getting his ass whooped, even if that person getting something ain't going right and they keep on coming back, they not, they brain not saying do that. They yeah. physically going in like, no, we going. Think about this, Kobe, yep. boom, Achilles, right? He Both tear it. Yep. He get out. He sat, he hurried up and got up. Why? He didn't give his brain enough time to say, man, it's over with. It's torn. It's gone. We out of here. We got to retire. He got up. All right, let me shoot this. Because most people are like, oh, carry me off the field. He was like, no, let me shoot the field. Why? Because he's telling his brain, we got to finish this through. We know we hurt, but we got to finish this through. Yeah. Shoot the free throw. Boom. He makes both of the free throws. And then, watch this. He doesn't even get the help. He hobbled himself off the court. Why? Mentally, he's telling himself, brain-wise, he's, he's manually overwriting everything that the brain is saying do. The brain is saying, lay down, get help, it's over. No. Well, watch this. If you listen to the documentary, he said in the back, he had a minute where he cried. Yeah. And he said, damn, this is how my career going to end. He manually went into his brain and said, hell no. We're going to come back better. So he did a speedy recovery. He came back faster than he was. Then he dropped 81 toward the end of his career. Awful repair. You feel what I'm saying? So there's moments in our life, especially in this game, where we got to manually override the emotion that automatically, watch this, that is already, what's the name of something when it's already in there? When it's already done, like, not pre, it's not pre uh it's, uh, Damn, but it's already made it, it's already built into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what this game is. So you think about this, when people come and people don't know it, and these are called like neurons. Right? The more you tie these together with a thought, a feeling, and an emotion, the more they come. So why? That's why they mean by some people are wired different. Mm. Okay, so how do people, so Kobe, again, is a human being just like me and you. But he won't. He did something that most people won't do. So, how did he? So, for people in the stock market, for people in finances, mm -hmm. right? How did they cut? How did they mainly cut the financial wire of fear and replace it with the financial wire of uh, building up? So you gotta move past. So now you gotta go in. I, I had this thing where I said you gotta uh, renegotiate the contract. So you gotta manly go in and reprogram everything you was taught. So. Think about this. When somebody trade and they lose money, what's the first thing they do? First thing they do is they're like, oh, I lost money, da, da, da. And they get sad and they get upset. And they get upset. Yeah. Well, the way to overcome that is saying, all right, I lost money. What did I do wrong? I'm going to show you an idea. B just started trading. Yep. He in three plays right now. B, this is your first time doing options? Yep. Right? But B been working with me for a year now, just on this. He been in here a year now, just on this. Yeah. So what he's done over this year was, watch this, he's adapted. 
my philosophy. My philosophy has been integrated into his, watch this, financial DNA. Mm, okay. You feel me? So watch this. Out of three plays, he's up on two and down on one. And the one he's down on is pretty big. Yeah. All right? But I can tell you the reason why he's not panicking is because of me. B, why you not panicking? For sure. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's why he's not panicking. So one of the things that hurt people is they try to get into this game that they've never done before mm. alone. And no philosophy. And because when you get into it alone, you haven't built up investor identity or a philosophy. So now you don't have no guidelines. Because you don't have no guidelines, you're basing everything on your diluted view of this game, and you can only do that based on old experiences. Yeah. Now, what happens when your brain doesn't have no data to navigate or reflect on? And now it has to go to emotion. And now it has to go through it. And the first initial emotion to losing money is what? Fear. Yep. So now to reprogram that, one of the ways is to get around people who are doing what you've done and not try to get the results they want, but get the mindset, the attitude, and the emotion that they have. Yeah. That is contagious. Or, I'm going to use another word, that's transferable. Here's why. Let's say you're a person that never went swimming before. Yeah. Or, let's say you're a person that's scared, has a fear of, let's say, dogs. Right? right? But you hang around people that got dogs. Right? In the beginning, you're going to be like, nah, I ain't, I ain't gonna mess with them dogs. Yep. But over time, being around them same people with them same dogs, it may not happen overnight, but eventually you'll ease into it. Why? Because they're going to show you, no, do this. Yep. Don't do this. Do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do this. You adapt those habits, and then you, by a byproduct, is you start adapting their emotion, their philosophy, their identity to dogs, right? And eventually you'll be like, Yo, I ain't really, they ain't really that bad. Now, I might not go get around a bunch of dogs, but I'm okay with being around these dogs that they have. Yeah. That's one step. That's one step closer to the overall goal of canceling the fear of dogs. Yeah, because you broke one. Man. Same thing with this philosophy. Yep. All right. Let me get around some people that invest or trade. And if I can see them moving, and if I can see them reacting a certain way, and then I can get the information from them on why they are acting. Matter of fact, the right word for this is the intel. If I can get the intel on why they act and why they're responding this way, it helps me navigate this situation a little bit better. How does a person become a leader or a captain? They've been through those scenarios, if not the same place, They've been through a scenario before. You don't just come out of school and say, I'm a sailor. No, I'm a roughneck. I'm a deckhand. I'm a, you something on the ship. You ain't just a captain. Yeah. A captain done been through the ocean. He done been through the storms. He done been through the hurricanes. He done been through the water sprouts. He done been through all of that. He has been calloused by the environment. Yeah. Right? He's been calloused by the environment. So what happens is, I gave him a strategy. And I give them a outlook. All right? So here's what we did. I said we're going to move from move from this play. We took the L here. It popped back to 805. We jumped back in. Now we up 600%. But most of them didn't take the L. They just stayed in and then rolled back up. I just repositioned. Yeah. But in real time, what did that do? It built up there for the two. And guess what it did? It rewired them. You know why? Because they watched their account. They watched one play go down 60% on. Yep. 50, 52%. And because they had somebody that been through it yep. and navigated with them, I didn't stop talking to them. I started talking to them more. Why? Because I didn't need them to be in their own thoughts relying on their old emotions. 
I needed to implement new emotions, new strategies, and I knew in that moment they really needed to hear from me. They needed to hear me talk, they needed to hear me explain to them, so now I'm on Zoom call with them for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, three hours, explaining one play. Yeah. Not every one play. Here's what I see, y'all. Here's what we doing, y'all. Here's what we got, y'all. Here's what we doing, y'all. Here's what we... Now, everybody up to play is $1,400 right now. But we rode it from $897 to $797. From $797, we got back in at $805. We rode it. We up 600%. The, the stock is now $1,421. But they don't get that if they don't ride with me through here. But now, guess what this did? Now we took away some of this. And we added it to this habit right here. Now we got them a habit to strain them instead of something to take away from them. This one play makes them better. This one play, guys, through that one play made them 10 times better. So you increase a person's financial fortitude and you help them heal that financial trauma and they get better at dealing with these by putting them through the situations, by being with somebody that can help you navigate it. It's just like working out. Right? Like if you working out with somebody, I already know if I'm working out and I put 225 on there, I'm going to get eight of them by myself. You know why? I ain't going to push my limit because I'm by myself. But if I work with somebody, I'm going to get like 10 or 12 out. Why? I know somebody with me. Yeah. Somebody my side. Somebody right there. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's a little motivation. Why? That person there is going to help me get through that next stretch that I need help in. The problem is when we get to the stress where we need help at, when we look back, we don't got nobody to help us or nobody to help invigorate us. We fall because we rely on the old fears and habits that we had. And them fears and habits don't help us in the next dimension.